All right, can you guys hear me? Hello, welcome, how are you guys? Everybody ready for week two? Good, awesome. Glad to see you guys in here. All right, what did you guys think of uh, your week one projects, your assessment, not the quiz, but the assignment one, your menu covers? Did you kind of enjoy that, going through that process? It was good, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Yeah, so we're gonna get into, that was kind of the start of getting, you know, kind of getting used to some of the InDesign tools, uh, also with concept development. Now we're gonna kind of get into the more of the nitty gritty details of InDesign with designing the inside of the menu cover. So we're gonna get into a lot of the style sheets, um, you know, and all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, unif unification of your theme is super important at this point. So once you decide on, you know, the theme that you wanna go with, the stronger cover concept, make sure that you're paying attention to some of the you know similar elements that you're going to carry through on the back side on the other side of the menu cover so that it unifies it's consistent in, in regards to the theme of it the look but um a few a few of you guys had a little bit of an issue with submitting your work some of the zip files didn't quite open for me so if you were one of the people that had that issue um Try emailing me your file as well. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe because they're <coughs> larger files or the file name is named a specific name. Um, a couple of you guys did maybe not read the instructions as closely and designed um, different uh, for different clients. So just kind of make sure you're paying attention to the specifics and picking. There's three clients to choose from. Um, so make sure you're, you're doing you know, one of the three in there. But most of you guys did a great job. I saw, I did see a lot of great, very strong covers that I knew you guys were paying attention to the design principles, which is awesome for a foundation class. So, you know, great to see. Um, some of you guys had a little bit of a, needed a little bit of a push, but you know, that's kind of the whole process. So take my feedback um, and push it forward, you know, see if you can, um, improve upon it uh, going forward into the next week. But I'm glad to hear you guys had fun with it. Could have been a little challenging for some, but for the most part, I think it's a fun project. The discussion too, um, don't forget you guys have uh, deadlines again this week. We always have deadlines, right? So discussion two, again, make sure you're posting that initial post by Wednesday and then before midnight mountain time. And then also your assignment and assessment to are due by Saturday before midnight. So make sure you're, you're getting that in. And like I said, it's all a process because we're building upon this menu. So <clears throat> if you're late and turning in the menu, you're not going to have as much time kind of to put towards the inside and doing your revisions. So make sure you're kind of getting that, that handled and going, uh, to re turning things in on time. So just checking in with you guys, how's everything going? Do you guys have any issues, problems, questions, concerns? Um, I know there's only two of you guys in here right now, but if you're listening to the recording, if you have uh, anything that you wanna talk about, you can definitely reach out to me via email or whatever. <coughs> but I'm gonna, excuse me, open this up to you guys. See if you have any questions at this point. I'm so glad we only have one class of scores instead of two. Okay. I guess some of you guys do only have one. Well, that's good. So you can really concentrate and focus and so I'm great. <laughs> good. <clears throat> you have two classes. Oh. Yeah, sometimes um, some of you guys have one or two, but is it another design class? Or is it a different <laughs> a little smirk there? Oh, okay, yeah. So you probably you have a you you have a heavy load there, heavier load. But you know, if you're interested in it, sometimes it's 
it's good to have two design classes. So, you know, you could think of it in that regards. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Adobe problems, yeah. All right, well, just work ahead. You know, I think that's always good to have, like, motivation to work ahead and do kind of set small goals in the beginning to kind of get things done so that you can really concentrate on the, the stuff that does take a little bit more time. So, all right. Well, like I said, if you have any questions, concerns, you know, whatever, let me know. I can, you know, send you guys more resources if you think you need them. Um, you know, I'm here to help, so. All right, so week two, this is what we're gonna go over today, learning objectives for week two, discussion two. We'll, we'll read over it, see if you have any questions. Um, some of you guys got started already on that, which is great. And then we'll take a look at your assignment to overview and demo. Um, we should probably look at your assessment as well. We'll take a look at that. I didn't have this on the list, but we will. Um, because we only meet once um, for lecture, but we do have a multi-session lecture. Not a lecture, it's a multi-session um, every Wednesday that I do. And that's just, it's not mandatory. It's if you guys need to have the one-on-one -on -one help. Um, it's there for you guys. All right, so let's go to week two here. Lots of things that you guys will be walking away from this week. <laughs> so it's all about style sheets, and we're going to get into the nitty-gritty, like I said. And this is what InDesign is all about. When you're dealing with, you know, a lot of body copy and information, such as a menu or a book, you know, you really need to... Uh, get a good handle on style sheets. So we'll talk about that. Learning objectives. So apply InDesign's text frame properties to create and link columns. And I'll show you how to do that. I've got somebody talking in here. Hello, welcome. Sorry I didn't see you come in here. My, I switched pages here and I missed uh, you coming in here, but welcome. Just got started here. Uh, number two, you utilize InDesign's character panel to apply changes to font, font size, kerning, tracking, and letting. So that all has to do with, you know, body copy. Uh, hello, are you able to hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> Where am I you? Hello? Did you have a question? Okay. So we're going to just kind of mute here for a second while I go over this information here, but we can hear you. Utilize the paragraph panel to adjust text alignment space before and after indents. So we will go over the character panel and also the paragraph panel. Utilize the rectangle, oval, and line tools to create a composition in, in design. You guys probably kind of played around with this last week as well. Um, we're going to learn how to prepare an InDesign document for print out output using the package tool. Some of you guys had issues with this. And um, so, you know, as far as that goes, I'm gonna go over that again. So a lot of you guys hopefully are clear on how to pro properly package. I had a lot of files that only had, um, that only had maybe one in, you know, just the native InDesign file in it. So make sure you're checking the fonts and the images as well to get all that together. Create and apply paragraph and character style sheets to manage type consistency, and I'll show you how to do that this uh, tonight. Illustrate how to utilize um, <clears throat> color palette in InDesign, within InDesign. Show correct image resizing and cropping methods within InDesign. Identify and apply four basic principles. So we're always thinking about this, the CRAP, so contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. Define and apply the five basic elements of design, so shape, line, color, texture, and value. So this week we will continue to learn how to work within the InDesign platform, focusing on paragraph and character style sheets as well as tabbing. Um, you can definitely check out this little video here. And don't forget, in your, um, you can check this out in modules, let me zoom out here. In, in your course media, check out the mandatory required videos and or links that articles that you need to read. So week two, 
every week's different. This is the first lecture before you hear this lecture that's posted in the, the live sessions area. So definitely watch that. And then the videos are listed down here and they're just like, I think the longest is 11 minutes, but they're pretty much like five minutes tops. And they just kind of give you a nice supplemental resource of uh, the basics in design as well as, you know, working in, in certain tools in InDesign. Um, optional video here, linden.com. So definitely don't forget to check that out. This will prepare you for your, let me see here, let me zoom out so you can see this in a different way. All right. So that's the learning objectives. Let's go ahead and take a look at your discussion since we're in this in Canvas. Read over the um, discussion, what we're going to be talking about this week. <clears throat> it's all about style. So go ahead and read the background. I will not read that out loud to you guys. That's you guys can read through there. It's just kind of giving you um, kind of an idea about paragraph and style sheets and you know kind of why you use them. The prompt is what you guys are going to be answering. So in today's discussion, we learned about how the use of style sheets can make layouts consistent to apply to two of the principles of design, repetition and alignment. Do you feel that restricting yourself by using style sheets hinders creativity? You know, do you think it could? Find an example where you feel style sheets were used, but it is still unique and creative. Locate three places on the layout and tell us what type of style sheet may have been used, character or paragraph, to support a principle of repetition or alignment or both. Be sure to cite where you found the image that you're using and the artist or firm name if possible. <clears throat> so for your reply post, look for other signs that piece your fellow student piece um, that the piece your fellow student presented most likely used or didn't use style sheets. You know, was it because of the poor use of repetition or alignment that wasn't already picked up on or was it something else that gave you that clue? All right, so you're going to go ahead and look online. You can, go, you know, Pinterest is a great way for a uh, place to start. Did you guys ever go on Pinterest before? I'm sure you've heard of it. Pinterest is always a nice resource to grab inspiration or design examples here. So maybe um, looking up some type of a, maybe menu, menu design, because we're, that's kind of what we're doing for class. So, you know, maybe this is an example that you want to talk about for this discussion. And you pull this image off, embed it in your, um, in your discussion, then you talk about you know, point out certain things in here that go on with the prompt here. So one of the prompted question is, I find an example where you feel style sheets were used, but it is still unique and creative. Okay, so that might be an example that you pulled. Locate three places on that layout and tell us what type of style sheet may have been used, character or paragraph, to support a principle of repetition or alignment or both. So for example, you could say, you know, the subheads, I would say, are um, the designer used character style sheets on and, and uh, kind of explain your, your, uh, your reasoning. And then the description, maybe the um, paragraph style sheets were used. And we're going to talk about this in the demo as well, kind of which, you know, why you use them for which purpose. So character versus paragraph style sheets, why the functions for both. But that's kind of what, what you should be doing for this discussion as far as pointing that out. All right. Any questions about that? My computer has been dinging with emails here. I apologize about that. Um, the source would be right here, paper and lace, you might want to click on that link to get that information for your citation here. But any questions about what is being asked for the discussion this week?
Everybody's so quiet. No, you're good to go. <coughs> so Pinterest is a great, you don't have to use Pinterest. It's just one uh, source I thought was a good, a good uh, website to show you. Yep. Okay. I'm trying to type it out. You can always um, listen to the recording too if I'm going too fast. If that helps, that helps help um, help your taking notes. But any questions so far as far as what what is being asked of you for a discussion too? Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go forward here. So you don't have to use a menu. I just kind of showed that example. You can show whatever design example, as long as you can see something in there that the designer was using uh, style sheets. So yeah, obviously you need a, uh, you know, you're not gonna use, you know, you're gonna use something that has a lot of type in it. So either like a book, layout, magazine, inside spread type of a example. Okay, so we're gonna talk about style sheets. So that'll kind of clarify in the demo what style sheets are. Style sheets are, yep, yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's probably um, good to kind of do the demo first and maybe do the discussion second, but it'll, it'll kind of make sense once we go through it. Style sheets are just a way to allow a designer to, say if you have multiple pages, not even multiple pages, if you're just designing a menu with a backside that has a lot of information, and you wanna set up your type so that you're not you know, constantly setting each style you know, manually each time. So say you have like 15 subheads, instead of going and changing them manually, one, one after another, you can set up a style sheet for that one style so it's easy, you just have to click on that style and I'll show you through the demo and it'll quickly change it to it. So it's a very, it's it kind of makes you more efficient as a designer, keeps everything consistent too. Okay, so with that being said, I think it's probably good to just go right into your assignment uh, details here and then we'll start the demo. And I think everything will kind of make sense hopefully or a little bit more clear. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna be continuing your menu design. So what you're gonna do at this point, you're gonna take my feedback, revise your cover that you think is the strongest one to go forward with. Um, if you don't have a cover yet, then say you have to redesign it, you know, you just kinda have to work through that process. But once you have a cover that you're going forward with, make sure that you're paying attention to, like I said in the beginning, the elements on the cover. I shouldn't be looking at the cover and then looking on the inside and saying this is two separate brands. I should know that, oh, this is the same brand. So how do you do that? By keeping it consistent, right? So you're not gonna use different colors on the other side that you used on the, you know, the front cover. You're gonna use similar colors. You're gonna use similar typefaces, the same. Um, maybe even the <clears throat> just the overall look, texture that you use on the front, maybe put on the back to keep the consistency. So we're kind of looking for unification. It doesn't have to emulate the cover, obviously. It shouldn't look like a cover, um, but it should have the same elements in there, kind of tying it together. All right, so I'm gonna have you guys read the background. It's just kind of talking about um, you know, kind of just starting out your, you know, let's see what we're talking about here. Yeah, it's just talking about the details that you've already went through in week one. So go ahead and read through that. Um, the prompt is, you know, like I said, is your assignment instructions, your specifications. So I'm going to read through that. Let me know if you have any questions and then I'll start the demo. 
All right, so your graphic presentation type choices and overall look should reflect the price point, market, and target audience of the restaurant you, cho you choose. So kind of keep that in mind too. You might have to go back and read the brand keywords um, to kind of align your, your elements, better align your elements to that target audience. Make sure that your menu can be read in both sunshine and candlelight. So, you know, think about it. When you go to a restaurant, you're holding the menu sometimes, especially in more expensive restaurants, possibly. Maybe not so much, maybe in the other casual ones too. You might have a challenge of lighting where you can't see, you know, the lights are dim or maybe there's not so many windows. So you want to make sure that, you know, it is, you know, readable in dim, in dim light as well. Your ultimate goal is to express the restaurant's personality in a visual way. For the assignment, you'll be finishing the project you started last week by adding the menu items for your restaurant. Please do not change restaurants. Duplicate your week one menu cover file. Rename it. So you're going to rename it that name. Choose the strongest of the two covers. Delete the page of the cover that you did not cho choose to use. Make revisions to the cover per the critique from your instructor. Add a new page to your InDesign document. Create a menu layout for the restaurant on the new page utilizing all text provided, at least two photos, paragraph style sheets, character style sheets, custom color swatches, tabs, and leaders. Apply the CRAP elements of design as well that you learned about this week. If you copy the layout from the example, your creativity score in the rubric may be low. When you're finished with your design, create a packaged folder, and then be sure that the quality screen resolution PDF is included in your package. Zip the package folder and submit the zip file. For assets for the week's projects are those that you downloaded in week one assignment, so should you need to download them again, you can find them below. Be sure to download the same restaurant you did your cover on. Doing a cover on one restaurant and the menu side on a different restaurant will result in no points. So it's just, just a nice little, you can go in here if you forgot to, or you put your assignment one assets, you can download them here again. Um, and there we go. So what I'm gonna do is kind of walk you through how I would set this up, and that will give you maybe a clear idea of how to approach the project. And then you'll get an understanding of what style sheets are, how to use them. Um, I still will show you also like the color swatches. I'll show you how to set up tabs for leaders. And then um, talking about the design principles, we'll talk about that. And then, you know, I can go over at the end how to properly package and zip your, your uh, project as well. All right, any questions so far? Lots of stuff to cover, right? Yep. As you're asking this question, I'm gonna open up my old, let's see the cover that we were working on last week. Let me open this up here. So these were the two covers. Let me go presentation mode here so you can see. <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of waiting for the question here. Um, that's probably because I probably gave you a message in there about something in regards to your assignment. So if you still have a zero in there, check to see if I have a message to you. That's probably something that I need you to do. To do. There's no message. Okay, well, I'll have to take a look at that. 
I'm teaching two sections of this class. Yeah, so it's, um, you know, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of you guys in this class, so I'm trying to, yeah, no, it's okay. Um, I will definitely check that out. If, if, if I see a message in there that you can't see, I'll just email it to you, okay? So then we'll figure that out. It might have been because I didn't check it, check it, but I was evaluating last night, so that's why I was surprised I didn't give you a message. I need to fix the package, and I did, so I was confused. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at that. I'll let you know, see what's going on there. Um, all right, so we'll figure that out. Uh, so these are the two covers I worked on in week one with you guys, just showing you, you know, how I would approach the project. Now I would get the feedback from my clients. Um, in your case, it would be me giving you feedback. And what you're going to do is you're going to make the executive decision of which one you would go forward with. Sometimes in my comments to you, I, I would kind of suggest which one is the strongest one that I believe is. Um, and then you can go forward with the changes that I suggested to you or playing around with it, experimenting. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go file, save as, and I'm gonna name this the, the new assignment two instead of one. I'm gonna save this to the desktop. And I'm just gonna make the executive decision, let me go to pages here, to get rid of the first uh, concept and just go with the second. Oops, am I doing pages? So in pages, if you don't see pages, go up to window and choose pages. You can see if I double click on here, it goes to my first layout. I'm just gonna hit this little delete. I already saved it as a new file. So I can go back to assignment one if I need to, um, you know, say if I wanted to go back to the uh, first concept there. Hold on a second, guys. I've got all kinds of tabs and stuff in the way here. Let me go ahead and quit my, now it keeps dinging me here too. All right, so I'm gonna go with this concept and go forward with this. So what I wanna do is I want to make sure the inside looks like the menu. All right, and in my assets folder for this, for this particular client, I'm gonna open up the folder here so you guys can see. I need to use at least two photos in that folder. So let me share my folder here. So in the assets folder, you should have downloaded, uh, let's see here. You know what? Let me grab that folder, hold on. That was my package folder. Sorry about that. Give me one second here. There we go. This is the folder that has the um, starlight images in it. So these are the images that I have to work with. So I have this frittata, I have this salad, I have the smoothies, and of course the logo, and then just the example. This is the example of the inside. So you can take a look at how your example was done on the inside and kind of, you know, I wouldn't emulate this. I would just kind of use this as inspiration. This is the menu cover too. You know, to see how they did this and how they aligned everything. But anyway, these are the three images that I can choose from. I can show all three, just have at least two image images on the inside okay i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna do a new um page so i'm just gonna go ahead and say create new page now i have mine on presentation mode so it looks kind of weird so at the very bottom of your toolbar you have this if you hold down the very bottom icon here Mine's set to preview, so it's gonna like knock out all your grid lines and any bleeds. So if I go back to normal, you'll see all of that again. Okay, I see somebody's typing here, hold on. 
Okay, no problem. Yep. Um, drop shadow. If you need to edit that, say I put a drop shadow. She was asking about how to edit a drop shadow. I put a drop shadow actually on this uh, particular logo. So if I wanted to edit this, all I would have to do is go back up to object effects drop shadow almost like you're putting it on again and you can edit it just make sure drop shadow is selected i don't know if you guys can see can you guys see this effects panel here okay so you can you can edit it by um, doing any of the presets in here so you can Go ahead and change all this. You can even delete it if you don't want it, just hide it and it takes it off. Okay, so you can kind of edit it here, the distance, all that good stuff, and then click OK when you're done. Does that make sense? So almost like doing the drop shadow over again just kind of allows you to edit the panel, the presets in the panel. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. All right, so I put page number two in there. Save it. All right, so now I kind of have to think, okay, how am I going to set this up? How, what's the grid structure that I want to go with? And what I would probably tell you to do first is, you know, go and get your copy. Take a look at how heavy your copy is. That's in your asset folder again. So let's go ahead and grab that. I should have kept that open. I apologize. I thought I had this on on my my actual desktop, but I didn't. I got rid of it. So in that folder of assets you have, and let me show you it again. I apologize. I'm going back and forth. Where I showed you the pictures that you had, you also have two Word files in there. The Word file should be for your cover and then your inside menu text. So go ahead and open up the menu text. And it's going to open it up in, in Windows. So you're going to see something like this. Yours might be different depending on the client that you chose. Just make sure it's all the copy that you have here. Select all. You're going to select all so you can go up to edit. I'm sorry. Um, where is it? Oh, let's see here. Select all is Command A on a Mac. And why am I not, I'm kind of drawing a blank here. So select all, I thought it was under edit. Give me one second here. Oh, that's because I'm in Word, that's right. Yeah, so you either double click on it or do a select all, which is Command A if you're on a Mac. And then do an edit copy. Oh, here's select all. I just was not seeing it there. <laughs> it was under edit. And then copy. Sorry, guys. It's been a long day. Go back to your um, InDesign file here. And then you're going to take your type tool. And I would just, I mean, just draw out a type box. It could be as big as your page. And then once you have that blinking and ready to go, hit Command V or edit, paste. Okay, and that's going to paste your copy in there. This is all the copy that should be on, on the inside of your menu. So knowing this um, will kind of help you understand how much room you need for your aesthetics. Okay, so we need, you know, I do usually like a one-third roll with my uh, layouts. It's good for, you know, you don't want to, you never want to split a design in half. Do you guys know why that is? So like if I were to split this to be like here and then have this be my pictures, that's usually not a good scenario because I don't know if you guys know this, but if you usually if you um, cut a layout in half, say an advertisement, you know, even this menu design, it, it, it looks like two separate elements where it doesn't uni unify nicely together. So it's almost being read separately. So that's why one third roll is always better. So you either have more more room for the type 
and you know just the one third here being for your aesthetics or opposite which would be less room for the type and more room for your aesthetics but because we have so much type i would say probably the opposite would be better so maybe more room for your type and just you know the the little smaller space here now you don't necessarily have to do it in this way you can um you can break this up into two columns as well and i can show you how to do that let me pull this back out now you can see how i'm adjusting this i'm pulling the the big boxes uh, your bounding box on the left and right to kind of pull this in and out and you can see the copies kind of moving along with it okay now if i wanted to have two columns instead of one this is one column text um, box here i go up to object text frame options and the preview box here and the text frame options box will appear i'm going to click on preview and see where it says columns fixed number and then it has number one i'm going to change one to two and you'll see the columns change here. See how there's two columns now? You can go three, four, as many as you want. That's where you would change that. You can change the width of your gutter in the columns. So we'll see the gutter right here in between. You can change that gutter width by just kind of adjusting this little toggle here where it has the number. There we go. Um, so that's where you would that's where you would change that. I'm going to go back to one here and click OK. All right. So you can do two and then kind of play around with it. I'm just, you know, you guys don't follow exactly what I do. You can if you want. That's fine. But if you want to do a different design, say you wanted to do maybe all of the aesthetic up here and the copy down here, that's fine. You know, kind of play with play around with it. I I would advise you to look at other menus just to get an idea of other, you know, ins be inspired by what you see out there um, and, and pick and choose what you believe is the best design for yours. So, it, you know, definitely don't feel like you have to do exactly what I'm showing you guys. All right. Once I start thinking, okay, this is, this is where I wanna go. And you can play around with it too. You're not, you don't have, you have to be set on it right away. I'm going to go ahead and look at my cover. I'm going to say, okay, what am I going to bring in um, that's going to be similar style-wise, texture-wise, um, that's going to unify it together. So I'm going to go ahead and take my, my rectangle frame tool because that's, that's the tool that you use, what, to insert images, right? And I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna have an image bleed from the left corner to the bottom. And then I'm gonna give just enough margin space before the type starts. So maybe even go even further this way. And say that's gonna be a picture right there, okay? I'm gonna do Command D, and I can either use the same pictures that I used um, from, let's see here, from the front picture, or I can go out and find other images as well. So for instance, I can use maybe this texture on the inside to kind of pull that, you know, that whole theme in there. I'm gonna sneeze here, give me one minute. <coughs> Bless me, Woo! I didn't have time to mute my mic, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. All right, so it can be a texture, it doesn't even need to be a texture, it can be a color, just something that is a nice aesthetic that it doesn't take, it's not too crazy where it's taking away from the information. I can even make this more, you know, less, of, um, less contrast and just give it a nice textured look. You know, so kind of play around with it and see. I just changed the opacity up here. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing. Hold on a second. Let me show my whole screen here. There's the opacity right here. All right. 
So that's one image that I'm going to use just to tie everything in here. The next image, I'm going to pull this over just a little bit. Next images are what was given to you guys. Now, remember, you have other shapes in here. If you wanted to do like a circle, if you think that would best represent the style that you're looking for, you know, based on your elements, you definitely can do that. Command D is file place. I'm gonna go ahead and find, um, again, that the images that were given to you. Um, let's see here. The frittata, for example, is one of the images. When you place them in there, and they say they are too big in there, in, in that frame, just go up to Object, Fitting, Fill Frame Proportionally. Okay, and that'll fill that frame. I'm gonna do an Alt Drag, so it's gonna make a duplicate of what I just did, and then I'm gonna do a Command D, File Place, and that's just an easy way to duplicate that same circle without having to guess the size. And you're just gonna uh, File Place or Command D, this new image in here. I'm going to go object fitting, same steps that I did before. And I'm going to do three because I think there was three images that, oops, alt drag that were given. Just make sure they're aligned. Yes, smoothies here. Okay. And then I'm going to align these. So I'm going to go up to window. I just selected all of them. And I'm going to go to Object and Layout and choose Align. And this will help me know that there's similar space in between all of these. So I did a Shift Select. So I select the first circle, do a Shift, select the second one, hold, keep the Shift key down and, and select the third one. So they're all selected. And then go ahead in here and choose, oops, not that one. We're gonna choose the distribute centers, or not, distribute vertical centers for if you have a vertical um, elements there. Okay, thanks Abigail. Then I'm gonna center this in here as much as I can. So I can choose my element in the background. Oops, and do the same thing. I think I might have to group these though. Let me group these. Object, group, and then shift select this background. And this is just to make sure, oops, there we go. I have to choose the uh, align vertical centers there to make sure it's all centered. Okay, let me hide all my extra stuff here so you can see what's going on. Okay. So, you know, I'm setting something up. I can always like change this up. Like say if I wanted this to hit in the middle there, I could do that. Uh, if I wanted to pull this, I think this is a nice space here. I don't want to be too close to my images. I've seen a lot of students that will do this where their, their type will be right up against images. You want a nice space in between. You want to be mindful of your margin space as well because this is what frames and balances your elements out. You don't want it to be too crowded. You want that nice um, negative space to kind of frame. That's what kind of makes it easier to follow with your eye, okay? You can also put drop shadows or, you know, strokes on these. these this is grouped, so if I do a drop shadow on these, it'll do it all together. So if I go up to Object um, Effects Drop Shadow, I can actually apply drop shadow on all of these at the same time. And then in the presets, obviously, I can adjust the darkness, the spread of it, you know, how heavy or subtle it is. I'm going to do a little bit more of a subtle uh, drop shadow. So it just pops off of there a little bit. So you don't necessarily have to use just square frame tools. You can even do a custom. Um, I believe you can do a custom one too. Let me see. Maybe it's just for, I'm gonna do a custom shape here. I think you can. I don't wanna tell you the wrong information though. 
I think I've done this before where I've made a custom shape and then I'll place the image in there. Let me pull this over. And get rid of, let me get rid of this line here. Make it more like that. Okay. Let me see. Do I answer my own question here? I'm just going to do a file place. I might not be able to. Oh, yep, file place. So you can make a pen shape. Um, I thought I did this before, so that's why I was wanting to show you guys this. You can make your own shape. You don't have to use just the shapes in here. So if you wanted to do something like that where it has a real, you know, like a curve shape, something that you customize, you can use the pen tool and then do a file place after creating it, and it can you can place the picture in there. Okay? So I, I want to show you that you're not limited to just those tools. All right, the next thing, let's see, I could probably do the wood in here too. That might actually look better. Let me see if I can grab um, the wood in here. Something like that. All right, any questions about that? So far. All right. Let me reset my essentials here. Essentials, there we go. All right, the next thing that we're going to talk about is how we're setting up our style sheets because we have a lot of information in here and I don't want to go in here and have to change each of these out one at a time. That's the that's the benefit of having style sheets, okay? Is that we can create a style sheet and easily apply it so that's consistent on all the subheads and body copy. So there's two different style sheets. Go up to window and you'll see styles under window and we're going to choose character styles go back up to window go to styles and then we're going to choose paragraph styles so there's two different kind so what are the differences all right so character styles is basically if you only have one word or one letter that you're applying a style to and that's where it, when you would use a character style. Say if you wanted to do one big letter starting the paragraph, almost like a bold, different color, and it's a different uh, emphasis, different size, you would do a character style sheet onto that to create that style. If you had a style that you wanted to apply to more than one word, so subhead, maybe that had more than one word in it, or even body copy, you would do the paragraph styles. For that style sheet okay so that's the differences now style sheets are great because you can place the style in here and it will be easily to access and change once you set that up so let me show you for example let's um, select the word smoothies with the type tool that's a one word uh, subhead so we could probably we can probably do a character style in this, but because the other subheads are a little longer and detailed in what you know what they have in there, you know, it's more than one word. I'm probably gonna just do a paragraph style. And I'll kind of show you the character style after I show you paragraph styles too. So I'm gonna highlight the word smoothies. And we're gonna set up a paragraph style so that all of my subheads will have the same characteristics. They'll be the same typeface, point size, color, emphasis, all that good stuff, okay? All right, so smoothies, let's go into paragraph styles, and you'll notice this says basic paragraph. That's a, that's a default paragraph style, so you can ignore that. What you're gonna do after highlighting that word, your subhead, you're gonna select the upper right-hand corner, this little tab here, 
and you're going to say new paragraph style. So you want to create a new paragraph style. Once you do that, a new paragraph style panel box will appear. You're going to name this what's relative to what you're changing. So for instance, this would be subhead. I'm going to name this subhead. It's important to name this so that you, you don't get confused and you know kind of use the wrong one. On the left hand side here are all your presets. So here's the general settings. You don't have to change anything here. Just leave that go. Basic character formats is where you'll pay attention to. Okay, now what typeface do I want this to be? Now you might want to think about this before you know you even start so that you have a good idea of the typeface that you're going to use. Um, because I'm doing this a little quick, quickly, quicker. I already have one in mind, which is I think universe is kind of what I was going to do. And I'm going to use a font family that has a lot of, uh, an actual font family that has a lot of other uh, options as far as like bold and condensed, because that'll make my life easier keeping it more consistent. If you choose a typeface that doesn't have a type family, you might run into the problem of using too many typefaces on your, in your layout. QRSTU. Why am I not seeing this in here? I'm looking for universe. Sorry, guys. There we go. So universe is a typeface that has a ton of type families in it. So you can see all these different. So what's nice about that is I can use this for a subhead, make it maybe bold, and then use it as my body copy, but make it light. You know, so I'm using the same typeface, keeping it consistent, but it has a different look and emphasis to it. Um, so let's do 65 bold and then we'll make this and try 14 points. That's the size that it's going to be in. The lighting, I'll keep the same. Everything looks good. Now, the next thing here's advanced character formats. This is just, you know, the horizontal scale. We're not going to change it. It should be 100% by 100%. If we were to change this and it wasn't the same, on these both both of these lines, then it would be stretched. It would be distorted. We don't have to worry about a baseline shift because not, we're not really worried about changing that at all. Indents and spacing, we're not even going to worry about that. You can. I can show you how to do that um, in a, in the next section of of style sheet that we're going to create. So we'll come back to that tab. So we're going to come back to that as well. Paragraph rules. We're gonna. That's a line that appears. Uh, within a paragraph. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, I'm going to kind of skip down here to character color. And I'm going to choose a color for this one just to, to kind of connect it to the front. She had pink sandals on. So I'm going to choose pink. So it's going to assign pink to that. So if I hit preview, that's actually going to show it. Let me click OK first. Once you click OK and everything's set, what you have to make sure of, because you have to go back with that word that you selected to change to, you want to go to your paragraph styles and choose subhead. You want to select it, because right now it's set on basic paragraph. When you do that, you'll see it being changed. And what's nice about that is I can go down here to the next subhead and just change that one. See how nice that is? It's very, very easy and convenient. And that's the whole purpose of style sheets. Right there would be my next one, subhead. Okay. Now if I wanted to, to edit this, say, okay, I think that's too big. I can double click on my subhead paragraph style, go back in here, change the point size to maybe a smaller point size. I can even make it all capital letters, see if I wanted to do that. Um, let's see here, I think that's in paragraphs. Here. here where it says case, all caps. Click OK. And look how it changed them all. Look at that. So quickly, once I assign that style sheet to that particular type, it changes them. So anytime I make changes, that's the easy, they're so convenient and easy. If you have like a hundred page book, Style sheets are wonderful because if you had to go back and change all of these different things on 100 pages, it would take forever. 
So that's why style sheets are, are uh, amazing. All right, the next thing that I wanna do, so you're gonna select what you wanna change, okay? So you're not gonna select all of the type. So the next um, point of order is, and read through this, you know, because you wanna make sure everything makes sense, because you wanna make sure your emphasis is on certain things. In this menu, you know, they're talking about smoothies and then they have what it is, whole fruits, veggies blended to order with the price, and then they have all of the, the description of the, the flavors, okay? So maybe I wanna point this out as well in each of these, because it looks very consistent to in, in every case that they have what they're called with the, the price point. So I'll, I'll name this, I'll make this another paragraph style sheet. So I'm just gonna select this paragraph, or this line of text. Um, and then I'm going to go back to my paragraph styles and say new. I'm going to create a new one, right? I'm going to create a new one. And when I, oh, I just, I just did that. If you do it this way, just double click on that paragraph style that you created. Because I think I showed you differently before. Let me delete that and show you again. There's two ways you can do it. You can either hit this new, create new style, and then double click on it to open it up to rename it. Or you can do the first, like the first time I showed you. Click on this little side panel and say new paragraph style. There's two ways to do it. I'm going to name this um, menu, uh, menu item and price point. Okay. This one should be a little different too because you know it's, it should be emphasized a little bit more. I'm gonna keep it consistent and keep it universe, but maybe this one I'm not gonna do as bold. Maybe I'll do a 57, let's see, maybe do a, maybe just do 55 Roman, it's a little lighter. Do it a little smaller, so maybe do 10 point. And then maybe the character color, I'll do maybe more of a, a darker, let's see, like a brown color. Now, if you wanted to change this, say you wanted to pick a color yourself, you just double click on that T. Oops, we're going to keep it process. Oops. Let me select this color here. Should have a new color change in here. I think you have to do it before we actually do it here. So I'm going to click OK on this one and then I'm going to change it. So I'm going to go into color in my swatches and I'm going to change this. If you go to swatches, which if you don't have it on your panel, just go to window and I think it's under color swatches. Yeah. This is where you can create your swatches. Now I just assigned it this color. I wanna make this a little bit dark, uh, more dark brown. Actually, let's go. Let's see here. With me here. Okay. All right, I'm going to go back to my paragraph style where I said menu price item. I'm going to click back on that and just make sure my character colors, yeah, switch to the new character color. I'm going to click OK. Everything's good. Now, if I wanted to apply this, it's not applied yet. Oh, it is right here. It's price point. I just applied it. So there we go. All right. So anywhere that this would be needed to you know be emulated so this line underneath the subhead would be and then let's see these lines so menu price point see all the ones with the prices on them yours might be different if you're doing another menu that's why looking through that is really important menu price point menu price point I missed these so I'm just oh wrong one let me go back 
So I'm just selecting those lines with my type tool and then selecting my style sheet that I created that should assign it to that. Now what's nice about this, say if I wanted to indent, and I'll show you this in a second before I even go to that. Let's first, let's create another, um, another uh, paragraph style for the, the description information right here. So again, let's go into paragraph styles, say new paragraph style, and we'll name this menu description. I'm gonna make this universe, but we're gonna make this more condensed. So 57 condensed, and we're gonna make this smaller, so nine point type, let's give it like a 14. Do 12 point letting. Um, type color. We're going to keep color at black. Click OK. And then select menu description to assign it. OK. So then go ahead and assign all of those menu descriptions under that should be consistent. Pretty neat once you get the hang of it. We need to set it one for this one because that's a little different than what we've been talking about. So leave that one for now. In the description. These are just describing what, what's on what's in the actual food item being listed. Okay. Actually do. That and like that. Okay. Um, like I said, this one's a little different under here. Um, you can either assign it a new one or I'm going to get the price point. That would probably work good. All right. Like I was saying before, if you wanted to have an indent on any of your um, copy, say you wanted the smoothies, the subheads to stay where they are, but you wanted just a slight indent for everything else. All you would have to do is choose all of but the subheads that you want to change. So let's go ahead and check on menu item price point. Double click on that. And then we're going to go to indents and spacing. We're going to do left indent. I'm going to pull it over so you can see it happening here. You can see where it says left indent. We're going to go ahead and bump this over about 0.25. And then we're going to click OK. And you can see it being bumped over. Now let's do it to the menu description too. Keep it consistent. You don't have to do this. This is just something to make it look a little offset and, and um, kind of reads a little bit easier when you do that. So I indented both the description as well as the um, menu description and price point. It just offsets it. See how it changed it all? That's the beauty behind style sheets. All right. Any questions so far? Hopefully I'm not going too fast here. And I'll show you what the character style sheets do too. Because I haven't, I haven't used it yet, but I'll definitely tell you, show you how that works. No questions so far. All right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, sometimes you have to learn the hard way, right? All right, listen, I'm going to take a five-minute break to give you guys some, just a, you know, relax for a little bit, um, and then we're going to refocus. We'll, we'll, we'll finish this up here. I'll talk about um, how to tab, use tabs. We're going to show how to use leaders, how to kind of position everything so it works on the layout. I'm going to show you what characters, what a character style sheet is. I'll show you kind of how that's applied. And then we'll go ahead and save it and package it and zip it and do all that good stuff. All right, so five minutes and I'll meet you guys back here.
Okay, let's get back to this. Oh, it looks like I missed the message there. Looks okay. All right. Can you hear me, Luz? Okay. <laughs> so make sure everybody can hear me here. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to show you just real quick about the character style because we only touched upon the paragraph. Now, again, the character style would only be something that you would apply, say, to a single word. So, for instance, maybe in this case, it would be on a keyword like smoothies or bowl or plate or glass. So, let's go ahead and show you kind of how character styles works. So, I'm going to select just the word bowl here. Go to character styles. And I'm gonna do a new character style. And in this new character style, it's the same as a paragraph style, only you have less options on the left-hand side here. And that's because you're only applying it to a character and or one word. So it's not as many options, because it's not as, many, not as much copy to really worry about. So you have the same, um, pretty much same things that you had in paragraph styles, just not as many options. Now I'm gonna change this to say universe to be universe, the same um, type that we had set for our subhead. I think I did 65 bold. The only difference I'm gonna do here is maybe, well, let's do more than just color. Let's actually, let's change this typeface completely. Let's do a really crazy typeface. Let's do Allura. And we're gonna keep it the same size it was 12. Maybe we'll do even bigger. Let's do 14 just for to show you guys. And we'll definitely pick a different color here. So let's do let's do this brown color and click OK. Now the same thing is you have to go back to your style and select it for it to be applied. Now the only thing here is you want to make sure your basic paragraph style is deselected but the only th problem is it's going to change your other words so before we even do that let's go back to character style and see if we can change the case to normal there we go so that's all we had to change so that's pretty much what character style is you're using it only on one word or one um, one particular uh, character I'm going to double click. Same rules apply as far as changing them. Say I wanted this a little bit bigger. Let's do 24. And there you go. So then you can go in here and just change all of these if that's kind of what you wanted to do. So that's character style. Okay. I'm going to go back and just undo this because I think, you know, I kind of liked it before the character style was paste in there so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this and go back to oops, let's go back there we go. all right so let's put character cells so they're pretty much the same um, same function you're just using the char paragraph style for more than one word okay and again, color, you know, if you want to grab color from your cover, you can take the, the um, eyedropper tool and go ahead and select in, in there to uh, grab the color to add it to your swatches. And once you add it to your swatches, oops, there we go. You have your themes in there based on that swatch that you just took a sample of. It kind of pulls all of the colors in there, which is kind of nice. So that would be under your color theme tool, under the eyedropper tool. If you have the color theme tool is nice because it'll sample all the colors here and put it in a folder. So it's sampling all those colors. Okay. Go ahead and get rid of this over here all right now um, the 
before we even, we have to center this on my page. Let me bring back my normal view here and I can see that, you know, I have more margin, I have more margin space down here. So I'm just gonna center this a little bit better so that it's, it has an you know, equal amount of space up top and on the bottom. And I might wanna take a look at my line lengths here. You know, for example, this one in particular is really long and then I have a short line here. So I might wanna do like a little shift uh, return, which is a soft return in front of one, say the red onions right before that. So I'm gonna do a shift return and it just bumps that down. Same with this one, maybe fresh shift return, kind of nice, uh, kind of a nice little, it's, it's not as long, it doesn't look as weird. And it kind of fits in a nice shape here. So I might wanna take a look at that. All right, um, so the next thing would be, if you wanted to play around with tabs, and I showed you how to indent, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm going to, what am I gonna do here? Maybe for, let's see, let's see paragraph styles. Since I already did an indent, let's go back to the menu description. I'm gonna take that indent off just for purposes of showing you how to do the tabs, okay? So I'm gonna take that off. So I'm gonna go back to indents and spacing, and I'm just gonna set this back to zero. See how it goes back to zero, my descriptions. And instead of doing indents, I'm gonna do tabs, just for that paragraph style. So tabs, when I select tabs, you have this ruler, and this ruler indicates from the, the type box left side, zero to the length of the type box. So you can see here it's almost five, a little bit over five. You have these tab arrows that indicate the alignment of your tabs. So you can have left justified, centered, right justified, or aligned to decimal. We're gonna do left justified. Um, if I wanted my type to go tab to the right of my type box, I would do the right justified. If I wanted to center everything, I would do centered. But I just wanna do left, so I'm gonna choose left. And then I'm gonna click in anywhere here, and you'll see on the left side, a line will appear in my preview. So I'm gonna just bump this out a little bit further than the indent, so you guys can see. So I'm gonna do maybe like 5.5, and just let it go. And then click okay. And then, oops. Where's my tab? This could be here. Oh, cancel, because we have to hit tab. So now we have to go in front of this um, word with the type tool, click right in front of it, and then hit tab. Next line tab on your keyboard. It's the only thing that's a little weird with this one. You just have to hit the tab button before the words here to make the tab happen once you set it. It's already set in the presets for your paragraph style, but you have to actually put a physical tab in there on the keyboard before to allow it to show, okay? Now, if I were to change that tab, say menu description, I'm gonna double click on that, Go back to tabs, I'm gonna change that position and I have preview selected. Once I hit that tab in there, you can see it being adjusted. Couldn't before because the tab wasn't in there yet. Okay, so that's what tabs are. Now, any questions about that? Pretty easy. All right, the next thing is your leaders. Do you know what leaders are? Okay, so leaders are those little dots that appear after the description. So it would be like maybe the whole foods, whole fruits and veggies blended to order. And then it'd be dot, 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 dot. Yeah, and then the price point. Yep. So we're gonna select the price, menu price item point with the type tool, I'm gonna double click on there. And we're gonna go to tabs. 
And what we're going to set this tab for is where the price point, so the $5 and 75 cents, where that's going to end up in the type box. So we want, if we want a leader in there, we want that price point to be aligned right. So we want to do the align right justify tab. So we're going to choose the right arrow and we're going to put it way over here, right? Because we want it on the right side of our type box. So right about there, I'm going to drop it. So you can see um, it's right at that edge of the margin. With that arrow drops, the right justified arrow, see where it says leader down here? We want to click in that box and put a little period there. Just one little period on your keyboard. Then you're going to click OK. It's not going to show right away. You have to get your type tool right in front of the dollar sign. You can hit a delete, so get rid of those spaces before and then you're going to hit tab. Now, problem with this is sometimes that will happen, so you need to adjust it so that's not bumping out. How do you do that? You go back to your item price point, double click, go back to tabs. We just need to pull this little arrow in just a little bit more. Oops, wrong one, sorry. So we can adjust it, just double click on your, your um, style sheet, go into tabs and just adjust where this, where this right justif uh, justified arrow is. Because you don't want it to be bumped down here. So see how it's a nice line and then, so what you can do is we're gonna apply this to all of these. Now this is already applied to it, we just need to hit delete, delete that extra space before the price point and then hit tab. So it's already set as a paragraph style. So I'm just hitting the, getting rid of that space in between and hitting tab. So it's a nice, you know, the eye follows very nicely from the dots to the, the price points, just makes it easier to follow. Yeah. So that's leaders. It kind of works with the tabs as well. All right, so I'm going to do a presentation mode so you can guys you can see what it looks like starting to look starting to look pretty nice there. Just make sure your design elements aren't getting in the way of the information. You want the menu items to be readable. You don't want to put um, you know, a, a similar contrasted image in the background. If you put any textured image in the background, make sure it's not getting in the way you know, of the readability of the type. You want to maybe change the opacity, you know, make it lighter if it's not light already. Make sure you have enough contrast. Make sure you have enough space in between each of the, the different sections here that kind of allows the, it's like a visual pause that allows the eye to know that, okay, we're looking at smoothies, but then this is a different section in a bowl, it's a different section. So you're kind of, that's kind of the proximity of your elements you're pulling together that belong together. So that white space helps separate your sections. Hierarchy is being shown here by the large emphasis, the color being used for the subheads and then breaking it down from there, making the other words not as emphasized and smaller. So you know where to look first, second, third. That's hierarchy. That's the, if you didn't, if you're, you're, you had similar hierarchy on the page, everything was emphasized, your eye may not be able to focus on one thing at first, might get confused might not know where to travel. So having established hierarchy allows the eye to travel smoothly, that it knows where to go, it travels uh, a little easier. But that's kind of what we do as designers. We organize information visually so it's easy to, to follow, to read, to understand. That's why it's important to understand those details, the design elements. Contrast, you have a, a nice even contrast here with the type versus the imagery. It's not too heavy on the one side. It's, it's balanced in that regards. All right, so we went over 
swatches, style sheets, text, everything like that. Let me see if I'm going over everything. Okay, the next thing is just to, you know, save it. If you, you know, you're happy with what you have, save it. We're gonna show you how to package this for those of you who did have issues. Once you're ready to go, say you're finalizing this, you go file package. Uh, hit package again, click continue. And the one thing you want to worry about is make sure everything's checked, including a PDF. I believe it said something about high-res PDF. Let me see here real quick. That's quality screen. Oh, okay. So smallest file is fine. Smallest file, just make sure the PDF is included in there. And then hit package. Click OK. Might take a couple seconds here. All right. I'm going to share my full screen so you can see what I'm doing. So I just saved that onto my desktop. Maybe I didn't. Let's see. I saved it in here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What the heck did I do here? Let's just look in file package. Where did I save that to? I think I saved it in the wrong spot. Yeah, I did. Desktop. Sorry, guys. Package. Save it on my desktop. You can see it placing it right there on my desktop. And then just go ahead into that folder. Double click on that folder. You can see that you know my InDesign files in there my PDFs in there, my document fonts that I use are in there, my links are in there, all my images. Just double click on your PDF just to make sure it looks good before you send it. Should have two pages in there. Looks like that. Looks great. Now we're gonna compress it. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Aren't we closing out here? Okay. Here's my folder. I can either hit the alt, I'm sorry, not the alt. My computer is freaking out here. The control, click it on to compress. If you're on a Mac, you can also go up to file compress. And here's the zip fo folder that you're going to uh, submit. Any questions about that? Nope, all right. Easy peasy, right? <laughs> all right, very, very good. I don't know if I have any, let me, Let's go over your assessment too first, and then I'm gonna see if I have any examples from past students um, that I can show you. Let me see if I can dig in here. Sometimes it's nice to see other people's work, but I don't know if I saved any. <clears throat> Doesn't look like I did, so. Sorry guys. I think I should probably save some from this class so I can show to future classes. I usually do. All right. Um, so yeah, just play around with your, your layouts. Make sure it's consistent. I'm going to look for consistency from the front cover to the back. I'm going to look for proper space, alignment, all the design elements, principles being put into play. I'm gonna make sure you do have things aligned. Stuff is emphasized, easy to follow. And what I would suggest is, you know, if you can just print it out, see what it looks like. If you have a printer at home, print it out, see if it's easy to read, hold it in your hands. That's a good way to test it. Um, so that maybe you can catch things beforehand. Oh, okay, thank you. Have a great night. <laughs> so that would be, you know, something that you, you should probably do. I do that a lot with you know, things that you hold in your hand um, in terms of like when you start designing for something, mocking something up, that way you test it out. 
All right, let me know if you have any questions in regards to your project assignment two. Um, for assessment two, it's going to be a quiz. So just a few things that are gonna be covered is uh, applying InDesign text frame properties to create and link columns. Prepare an InDesign document for print output using the package tool. Create and apply paragraph and character style sheets to manage type consistency. Identify and apply the four basic principles of design. Define and apply the five basic elements of design. So it's based on week two's live sessions, readings and videos. This is a total of 15 questions. You have unlimited time to take the quiz. 50 points. All right, and that's kind of where I'm gonna end things now. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, I will be on the boards kind of reading your discussions in the meantime, and um, hopefully you guys are you know good to go from the menu to the inside. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with, and I'll be, I'll be seeing you guys soon.